The design of the John Deere K-Series backhoes reflects a lot of consideration for safety. But does this automatically ensure safety on the job site? There are many pieces of safety equipment on the backhoe loader, but there's no assurance that the safety equipment will get the job done unless you use the safety equipment that's on the unit. One of the most important pieces of safety equipment is your seat belt. Buckle up before you start the engine. The rollover protective structure by itself does not assure your safety in the event of an overturn. If you're not wearing your seat belt, you could be thrown and crushed. Don't operate under the mistaken impression that if a machine overturns, you can hold on or jump free. That impression may be fatal. Before starting out, make a quick check of the operational controls. It's better to take a moment now than to find out at a critical moment when it's too late to avoid an accident. The backup alarm alerts bystanders that your machine is changing directions. Keep it operational. Even though the backup alarm is sounding, you still need to look behind you before and while backing up. Bystanders may ignore the alarm, especially in busy, noisy areas. As was mentioned, it's up to you to use your safety equipment. And it's also up to you to use good safety judgment. As the operator, you have a primary responsibility for the actions of the backhoe. Always think about what you have to do before you do it. Never stop thinking about what is the safe thing to do, not only for yourself, but for the people around you. This brings up another important point. There's only one seat and seat belt in the backhoe, and that is for you, the operator. Don't carry passengers. When working in congested areas, reduce your speed. You never know what might pop out in front of you. You should also reduce your speed when in rough terrain or when carrying a heavy load. No matter what the terrain, always carry your bucket low for better stability and visibility. This is particularly true when working on slopes. It is preferable to back up steep slopes. With most of the weight of the backhoe on the rear of the machine, backing up the slope will help keep the front end on the ground. Always drive up or down the slope vertically. Avoid turning on a slope. That's when the machine is least stable. It may overturn. When using the loader, keep the loading surface smooth and level. This not only makes it easier to load the truck, but also avoids the possibility of tip over when the loader is being raised to dump. To prevent cave-ins near an excavation, work perpendicular to it or at a slight angle. This will keep the extra weight away from the edge and limit cave-ins. When planning to dig a trench, it's always important to call ahead so underground utilities can be located and appropriately marked on your job site. In the United States, one easy phone call to 811 starts the process to get your underground utility lines marked for free. When you call 811 from anywhere in the country, your call will be routed to your local one call center. When setting up to dig, be sure to stabilizers have a solid base to rest on. To help prevent cave-ins, be sure to place the spoil pile at least three feet away from the excavation, even farther away if the excavation is deep. Also on loose soil, the spoil pile should be placed farther away to help prevent cave-ins. When digging on a slope, place the spoil pile on the upper side of the trench. The machine is more stable when swinging uphill and it makes it easier to backfill. When shutting down the unit, there are a few simple procedures that you should follow. The machine should be parked on a level surface. 
move the FNR lever to neutral and set the park brake. Lower the front attachment to the ground. If the unit does not have the turbo cool down feature, operate the engine at half speed without load for a couple of minutes. This will help cool down the turbocharger. Slow the engine to low idle before stopping the engine. For units equipped with turbo cool down, simply press the stop button. The engine will automatically stop after cool down if necessary. After engine shutdown, move the hydraulic levers to release the pressure so you know for sure that the attachments will not be moving. If you're shutting down for the day, it's a good idea to lock up the machine against vandalism. You never know who might stop by. If you plan to haul the unit, you should always use caution when loading it on or off a trailer. This is one of the most likely times for a tipping accident. Be sure the trailer is sitting on a firm, flat surface. The bed should be clean of debris. Use chalk box against the trailer wheels to help prevent the trailer from moving. Make sure the ramp angle is not too steep. You should always fasten your seat belt before loading or unloading in case of an overturn. The brakes should be locked together before loading. It's recommended you have a spotter to help you line up the backhoe. Drive slowly onto the ramps and trailer. To keep you straight and on target, some operators line up on a board or other object on the trailer. The center line of the machine should be on the center line of the trailer. The unit should also be balanced fore and aft on the trailer. Once on the trailer, move the FNR lever to neutral, set the park brake, and lower the attachments. This may also include lowering the backhoe. After cool down, shut off the engine and release the hydraulic pressure on the attachments. As before, lock up the unit against vandalism. Built-in tie-down loops on the K-Series allow you to easily use a chain or other device to fasten each corner of the unit to the trailer. Do not place chains or other devices over or against hydraulic lines or hoses. Use an appropriate load binder to secure the unit. Before you haul the machine, be sure of the height from the top of the load to the ground. It's better to know your limitations beforehand rather than learning the hard way after you hit something. As we've seen, John Deere K-Series backhoe loaders are equipped with many safety features and systems, but it's up to you, the operator, to use them. You have to think about every move you make before you make it. It doesn't matter how much experience you have, it only takes one mistake to make a difference in your life or in the lives of others. Statistics show that of all the accidents reported, over 90% of operators hurt or killed were listed as experienced. Accidents don't always happen to the other guy. That other guy could be you.